What's going on, guys? So, um, the race is canceled this week because of uh, bad weather. It's supposed to be thunderstorms and rain, and you know, just not just not good for the birds. So the uh, combine made the decision to cancel the race, and that's a bummer because my birds were rolling this week. Uh, we tossed. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday they rested, and then Thursday and Friday, training tosses. They flew over 200 miles this week, and they were hauling. They were moving. Um, we've done a, a lot of changes in here the last uh, couple weeks since the first race. Uh, the first race, I'll tell you about my mindset. Uh, the first race, we went into that just hoping to do okay. I was hoping the birds did well, hoping my birds came back, and I just didn't want to get blown out of the water. And then uh, we came in, my first bird came in 10th in the club and 33rd in the south section. And, you know, I saw that, you know, my birds can do it. And if I just got her down two minutes earlier, because she was home for about three minutes before I got her to clock in. If I got her down, two minutes earlier, and if she broke two minutes earlier, then that's four minutes off her time, and we would have been in the top five. And it's such a tiny difference between 10th and first. I mean, 10 minutes. And the littlest things have to happen in those 10 minutes. I mean, break a few minutes earlier, come down a couple minutes faster, and then boom, you're in first place. So my birds were right there. So. From that week of feeling of just being, I hope my birds do well, to this week, I knew my birds were going to do well. I was counting down the days. But, um, you know, leading up into that first race, I was pretty on top of things. And now I am ridiculously on top of things. Uh, so my weekly schedule, you know, was... But prior to that is I would get up extra early on days they would they would train and I'd basket the birds and take them to my friend's house and come home get their food ready and then you know head to work to now I get up early I come out here I, I check their droppings I check the birds weights I check their wings their flight feathers I mean literally everything I check um I clean the loft, I get their water ready, I weigh their food now, I have a food scale, I don't do the scoops. It's, the scoops leave too much room for error. One scoop's too little, one scoop's too much. Screw it. A tablespoon is 0.5 ounces. Weigh the feed. Uh, my tip to you, food scales are inexpensive. I weigh the feed, simple math. You count how many birds you have, times one ounce of food, two tablespoons a day, one ounce of food per bird. If you have 30 birds, it's 30 ounces of food. Put it in the scale. Boom. Accurate weight. So that's what I do now. I know exactly how much food the birds are getting in the morning, how much food they're getting in the evening. Um, we have every vitamin and mineral that I think these birds need. All the minerals and grits are in here 24-7. The birds have access to it whenever they want. Um, you know, I can do the, the best I can in guessing what they need, but they know what their bodies need in terms of minerals and grits. And it's here 24 seven and they're eating it right now. They know they need it. They're eating it. We got this one over here, picking at some minerals. These guys over here having some of the grit. They know what they need and they can have it whenever they want. So, the one thing that I'm, I'm learning with this is you have to be consistent. You have to be regimented. You, just as much as the birds. You can't take days off. There's there's no sleeping in. There's there's no nothing. Um, you know, I get up at 4.30 Saturday to Sunday now. It's That's just how I do it. It's There's no, or Sunday to Saturday, I should say. That's just how I do it now. I'm out here at 4.30 in the morning. Days they don't train, I'm still out here at 4.30 in the morning. I get out here, I check their poop, I make sure it's it's round, um, you know, greenish brown, round, light urate on top, down on top. If I've learned if you don't see down, your birds aren't in the best health they can be in. And 
for you, you new guys, because in the beginning, I didn't know. I didn't know what down was. I thought it was just, you know, like feathers, you know, because sometimes they lose like, like this is like a feather they just dropped, like an under feather or something like that. And, you know, I thought that's what I was, I was seeing was down. And no, that's not down. So this, this is down. And I know my birds are in good health. You just saw. I can just find a piece of down. It floats around. It sticks to everything. Half the time I leave the house and my wife tells me I got a feather in my hair and it's down. And she's pulling it off out of my hair in the car because I come in here when I'm off, I don't know, 52 times a day to check these birds and just observe them and see how they're feeling. And you know it's the down. Another way to tell is like, okay, so here's like another little feather. You can't. If you try to roll up that feather, it, it doesn't really go into a ball. It kind of eventually comes back to shape. But the down, it's like sticky. You can just roll that into a ball and it, it'll stay in a ball. It's not gonna unroll, then it just falls down. So down almost looks like a little piece of cotton. So like, here's another one, that's down. This is just, you can just roll this into a ball. See, and it'll stay. So you have to come out here in the mornings for you new guys. And again, I'm new. Next month is a year that I've had pigeons, my first racing season. So don't take anything I'm telling you as gospel, but if it sounds good and you want to confirm it with somebody who's more experienced and they tell you what I'm telling you is right, then you can listen to me. But I'm out here every day. I check the birds droppings very important to do that um and you have to do it in the mornings early before the birds get off the perch because not all the birds feel the same i mean they're individuals some of them feel might get run down a little faster than others so while they're on the perch you come out here and you check the poop make sure it looks good and there's down before they get off the perch and then you'll know which bird might not be feeling right and then if you choose to you can medicate that bird or you can, you know, monitor it. Um, I used to lose sleep. If I saw a dropping that looked bad, I panicked thinking, oh my God, my birds are not healthy. And it took me a while to realize you can't go based off the poop during the day because they, some, if it's hot, they drink a lot of water and their, their poop is a little more runny. Um, if it's green, they could just be stressed out, heated from overheated from training and it might not be the end of the world. You need to check again in the morning. If that bird is repeatedly doing that for a couple of days, then in my mind, something's not right. But if it's once, and then in the morning, that bird's droppings look great again, and there's down, that bird's fine, and it was either stressed the day before, or, uh, you know, overheated, drank a lot of water, etc. cetera. Um, I've noticed when we have an issue with a hawk, and a hawk goes after them, and they get spooked, they're stressed out and they have a little watery or greener droppings for a little bit and then it goes back to normal once they calm down. These are just things that I've observed. Um, so the, the moral of this state of the loft and pigeon talk and the things I've learned is you gotta be on top of these birds. You gotta check them daily. If, to me, if you're, and again, I'm new. But to me, if you go in in the morning and you blindly basket your birds and you don't put any real effort into checking them while you're basket, basketing them, you're cutting corners. And you can't cut corners. Uh, every morning when I basket these birds, I come in and I feel their weight. And I check the skin on their chest. I, I make sure it's pink. It's pink, they're, it's good. I check their flight feathers. I want to make sure their wings look good. I, I check everything. I check their eye clarity. Um, if I think a bird looks a little out of it, then I check down its throat and I make sure its throat looks clear. I, I'm on top of it now. That first race lit a fire under my ass. I was, like I said, I was pretty on top of things beforehand, but I can tell you honestly, in comparison to how I am now, to how I was three weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was definitely cutting a little corners. If, you know, I didn't have to train or I, you know, the birds weren't going out. I wouldn't get to come out of the house that early. I'd come out at seven in the morning. It's light out. The birds are out in the aviary because I don't really close this door to the aviary when the birds are in. 
so they can go out when they get up and see the sun. And I was doing it wrong because the birds are now moving around. They're flying around. The cocks are fighting. They're chasing hens. They're going from perch to perch. I don't know who was on what perch. I don't know the poops on the floor now. They stepped on it. I can't tell what it looked like. And I view that for me as now cutting corners. I, that doesn't happen anymore. So to me, you got to clean every day. You got to change their water every day. You got to wipe out their water every day. You got to wipe out their feeders, their troughs every day. They need fresh everything every day. Their loft needs to be cleaned every day. This is, again, in my opinion, some of you guys may do it differently and you may not have any issues with that. And that's fine to each their own. But for me and what I'm doing now is this is daily, seven days a week. We're not cutting corners anymore. We're cleaning daily. If I can't clean in the morning because I got to get to work a little early, I clean in the evening. If I can, I'll clean twice a day. Like today's Saturday, I clean this morning. I'll clean again this evening before these birds come in for their last feeding because I want to know what their droppings look like. I want this place to be clean. I don't want any dust. I don't want anything in here that could be detrimental to these birds because I'm asking them to do a lot. Uh, you know, they're flying hundreds of miles on the weekends for races for me. They're not doing this for themselves. Trust me. They, these birds, they love to fly, but they're also very content flying around my house for 30 minutes and then coming right back in to, to chase their girlfriends around or fight with each other for a perch or pick at their grit. They're very content with doing that. They're not doing this for them. They're doing this for me. So I need to do everything I can for them. And I can't control the weather, I can't control the wind, I can't control the hawks, but I can control everything that happens in this loft. And that's what I'm gonna do. I can control when I send them, where I send them, and how I send them. And uh, the how is the condition they're in, the shape they're in, the health they're in. All of that is up to me to control. So that's what we're doing here at Dan's Loft now. We're, we're not playing any games. Um, I'm not doing this to lose. Now, this is my, my first season, and I want to see progress. I've said from the beginning that I want to see myself get better. And we did very well the first race. We were top 10 in the club, 33rd in the south section. That is fantastic, and, and I was upset about it. And my friend Silvio, you guys follow him, made us loft. He's texted me, you be, that was great for a first race. You need to be happy. And I'm telling him, I am happy, but I want better. Like, I want better now. And I don't want to lose. I do not want to lose. And, you know, fifth place to me is losing. It's good. Tenth place is losing to me. First place. I want first place. I want to see a first place finish in a race. And that may never happen and this this year and you know what that's okay but the only way i'm going to be okay with that is if i know i did everything i could do to give these birds the best possible chance to succeed if i don't win and we aren't consistently in the top 10 percent in the club but i did everything that i could do to make these birds succeed then you know what i'm gonna sleep at night but if we do badly and I know, you know, I wasn't on top of their vitamins and I wasn't on top of their minerals and I wasn't cleaning every day and and I didn't check the bird's health and I wasn't feeling their weight every day and making sure they were in the best possible shape they can be and to succeed, then that's on me and I have a problem with that. So the same way with the pigeons is the same way I live my life is I only worry about the things I can control and I don't give a second thought to the things I can't control. And that's how you have to be with the birds. Control what you can control. When they're out of this coop or this loft, there's a whole lot of stuff out of my control, a whole lot of factors. And I can't stress about that. I can stress about everything that happens here and that everything else should take care of itself. So, all right, guys. Um, I've gone on enough. I know I can be long-winded and ramble, and I probably repeated myself a hundred times. But I just wanted to give you guys kind of a state of the loft, uh, how I'm feeling, and yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to next week. I know there's a hurricane out there out to sea. Nobody knows what it's going to do. Um, 
but it better go out to sea and miss us because I'm racing next weekend. That That's it. We're racing. These birds are ready to go. So, all right, guys, uh, let's take a quick look at the birds. And, um, yeah, until the next video. All right, come on, guys. Over here. This way. Come on. This way. My knee. Come on.